Hello, Vinyl Community. How you doing? I'm Gary, and this is Physical Format Rock and Roll. Thought I'd film out in the backyard for this, uh, so you're probably going to hear some cars go by out front because they go by pretty fast. Um, I want to enter this contest video for Vinyl Community legend Richard McCook. He's got his 25 uh, contest that he's doing right now, and I've seen some fantastic entries into it, and uh, I thought, I like Richard, I just think he's a really nice guy, and so, win, lose, draw, whatever, I wanted to enter the contest to support it, plus it's a pretty cool contest. Let's uh, try out this beer, Mad Tree Summer Camp Haze, it's a hazy IPA, I've never had it before, so let's try it together. Cheers, vinyl community. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, I'm sure, depending on where I'm standing, how that sun's hitting me, I'm sure you're getting a nice glare off of my forehead. I probably look like my buddy Mike from MGK Boston. Anyway, anyway, I'm having a hard time seeing also. Let's put these on. First off, four eponymous albums. So they have the album title of their of the artist that did it. That's the name of it. Normally that's debut albums, correct? Not always though, as you will find. But the first one, well, from 1976, we've got Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Right? You know this album. It's pretty famous. Of course. It's got Breakdown on it, uh, and American Girl, which was featured in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Classic album here, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. I, I love, uh, the earlier part of Tom Petty is probably my favorite um, of his career. But I mean, he had a fantastic career, and I, there, I don't know that he ever made a bad album. Okay. Next up, one of my favorite bands of all time from Rockford, Illinois, Cheap Trick. Holy crap, this is a smoker. This, uh, their debut album, this is famous. I mean, you guys know this one. I, you know, Hello Kitties is on here, of course. Um, Mandicello, Mandicello, how do you say that? Yeah. That's a good song, even though I can't pronounce it correctly because I'm an idiot. He's a whore is on here. Uh, hold your peace. I, you know, this was, you talk about coming out with guns blazing. This was a fantastic debut album. But here's the thing with Cheap Trick. They had two albums called Cheap Trick. They also had this one from 1997, I believe. And they went back and just called another one Cheap Trick. And I'll tell you what, folks, if you haven't ever heard this album, holy shit, go buy it. This is a great Cheap Trick album. Man, I love this. Uh, this is one of their top albums for me. It's rocking. It has some really heavy moments on here. And then it's got some, you know, just classic Cheap Trick harmonies. Uh, love it. So there's a bonus. Cheap trick, cheap trick. How about that? Okay, let's move on. I talk way too slow. Next up, 1988, Lita. It's just called Lita. Lita Ford, this was her big album that she had on here, of course. This has the big hit, Kiss Me Deadly, and Close My Eyes Forever. Uh, but the fantastic, my favorite song on here is probably Can't Catch Me, which was written by the one and only Lemmy Kilmeister. Also love the song Under the Gun, which is on here. Classic album by Lita. Take this out. So we can check out that cool looking picture on the back too. That's pretty badass. Lita Ford. Next. All the way from Dusseldorf, Germany. Doro. Not her debut solo album actually, but it is just called Doro. Another great album here. Uh, this is kind of a little bit famous also for having Gene Simmons as executive producer. And she does a Kiss song off The Elder called Only You. What a great album this is. Uh, I was lucky enough that my good buddy Josh 
from the flip side actually got me this album. How cool is that? He knows I love Doro. Next, okay, the next part of this contest. Uh, show an album that you have that has a very long title. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have the vinyl because I've never seen the vinyl on that. But we have Alanis Morris, Morissette's album. Uh, suppose, what's this thing called? Supposed Former Infatuation Junkie. That's a pretty long title. No, I did not count all the letters in it. You can count it yourself if you want. I'm sure it's not the longest one. It didn't win. I've got one that's longer, but I couldn't find it. And then for shortest title, and no, this is also not the shortest title that I have. Uh, but I saw some people get some with like two letters, one letter, whatever. And I thought, I, you know, I'm not, I can't compete with it. I can't, I can't think off the top of my head. So because it's Richard McCook, we're going to put album by ABBA. Because this is also a fantastic album. And it's just called album. Uh, the album, actually. Oh, there. Now I added some letters. There's no way I'm, I'm winning this part of the contest. Uh, I don't care because I love this album. And it has the song Eagle, which might be my favorite song by ABBA. Love this album. Love it, love it. From 1977. Now the final part of his contest is this crazy thing that's got everybody stumped. I uh, say, why am I calling it 25? What does the 25 represent? I don't know. I've seen some good guesses and I've seen people do a lot of math on it. I'm not very good at math, okay? So I can't figure out that part of it. But uh, you know what? I'm going to say for 25, you can tell I really thought this through, didn't you? Um, you know, I don't know how many pets, if he's a if he's a dog or a cat guy or whatever, but I'm guessing that he's got uh, 25 animals buried in his backyard, different pets that he's had over the years. So that is my guess for 25. But hey, go check out Richard McCook. Check out his awesome channel and check out this contest. Thank you so much for watching uh, and drinking this mad tree beer with me. Uh, I'm Gary. This is Physical Format Rock and Roll. Till the next time, my friends, I will see you down the road.